AFK Arena is a very well-known name in the gotcha space, but now its sequel, AFK Journey, is coming into the fray, and it is launching on March 27th. And, of course, your handsome boy here has been sponsored by the lovely people over at Lilith and Farlight Games to take a look at my first impressions and talk a little bit about AFK Journey. If you want to help support your boy and support the game, there is a registration link found in the description and the top comment of this video. So make sure to go ahead and click that and sign up to start your journey today. Let's go in and take a look. Now, as I said, AFK Journey is the sequel to the previous idle game, AFK Arena, but with an original story and events, you don't have to have played the first one to play this one. Just in case you were wondering about the story, yes, it does come with a skip button if you would like to use it, and it gives you actually a little handy dandy recap if you decide to skip this part of the story, just giving you a brief summary of what happens in the conversation if you're a little short on time. With an updated engine and a bunch of new systems that have been added into the game, it is looking honestly so good so far. I'm currently rocking it on PC, but it will also be available on mobile for iOS and Android. This game is semi open world, if you want to call it that, where you have this isometric like camera where you can explore, look for chests and puzzles and then come across encounters, which then bring you into like an instance like combat. It's a little reminiscent of like a JRPG in that way. Actually, on the note of a JRPG, you can actually customize your character. It's a fairly decent customization system too, with an opportunity to unlock more kind of like appearances or like costumes and things as well. Uh, there is a decent amount of selection to start the game off. You've picked between a few different like, you know, faces and uh, other little uh, additional goodies. You've got your classic different like, you know, face shapes, clothing, face styles. Uh, you got some back headwear, cloak. You can change the eye color, hair color, lots of different things that you can kind of personalize the character to however you would like to play. And just for a brief moment here, the I love the art style of this game. I love the texturing for it. It has almost this painterly look that you have that it, on 3D models. And it's just a great rendering that they've put together for this. I'm a big fan. As you can see now, the weather is changing. So there is full day and night cycles with other weather mechanics that have been brought in as well. One thing I even experienced while I was playing is that wind will start to kick up at some points and actually start to kind of push you a little bit in the direction that you're running if you start running against the wind, which I just thought was really interesting and just a fun little tidbit that they added in there. One really cool thing about the open world is this character right here, this Pathfinder, that's actually another player. So this is one way that while you're exploring, you can actually try and add other friends or view their guilds, view their profile. They'll just be around resting in the world. And it's just a nice, another addition to the overworld. With all these little things, honestly, it was really surprising to me that all of this was found in just kind of like a mobile experience, and it definitely went above and beyond what I would expect kind of from an idle game. The overworld as well really makes everything feel a little bit more connected, whereas like kind of with other idle games, everything feels a little more like segmented and there's just so many menus you're going around. It just makes that story and exploration component way more cohesive. If you don't feel like walking around in the overworld as well, if you do click your active quest, it will auto path it there for you, and then you can activate it. However, you don't want to path too much because if you go a little bit off the beaten path here, you can find some other rewards and goodies like this chest that's over here in the forest. I'm just going to go grab that real quick. Also as well, they have added these fast travel points, which is definitely needed because the map is actually way bigger than I was expecting when I first started this game out. And so being able to jump around back and forth using these waypoints has definitely been a nice addition. So AFK Journey is an idle game with idle combat, but one of the major improvements in AFK Journey is they've incorporated this almost auto chess like system where you don't simply just put in the characters and they just kind of, you know, pop in and do whatever they do and in, into kind of random formations. This kind of grid-like system allows you to actually place units around in other ways to kind of get different advantages when going into combat. Like right now, I'm running two tank and three DPSs, two mages, and one marksman. And I must say, this team has worked pretty well for me so far. But I'm sure as the game progresses and it gets a little more difficult, I'm probably going to need to be incorporating more kinds of supports like, you know, Hewen or Rowan here. One other cool thing too is there's environmental factors that will come into play when you're playing in certain kinds of combat. So as you can see here, there are walls that are currently behind them. This is going to affect if you have, let's say, an assassin type character that wants to jump to the back line, that wall could 
potentially be in the way when they jump back and do that. Whereas if you're using a marksman character, you're not going to have any issues with running around the walls. Same thing with tanks. You might get blocked by a wall and you have to run around it and then you've got a whole dead period of time where the tank isn't even in combat. So having the different kind of terrains that you have to work around too makes other combats feel a little bit more unique. Now I definitely want to admit that in the early game formations don't matter a ton. You're leveling so quickly and getting new gear so quickly that the formation is kind of irrelevant but definitely as the combat starts to increase you're going to want to be taking your formations into consideration. One of my other favorite things here is that they've incorporated everything into 3D models now. I'm kind of getting tired of 2D games, so I love being able to see their skill animations like Cecia's here, where she summons in Carlisle. It makes combat way more fun and engaging to watch, and it, it way more enjoyable for me personally. And now, I, I get it, it's idle combat. So, you know, it's only going to be so engaging for some people, but the little bit of extra flair that gets added definitely goes a long way for me. Continuing on with the characters though, let's talk a little bit about kind of the factions and what goes into character building. So as I kind of mentioned in some of the classes previously already, each character is going to fall into one of the archetypes here. We've got support, rogue, mage, marksman, warrior, and tank. On top of each of those classes, each character is part of a specific faction. For example, Cecia here is part of the Graveborn faction. Factions are important because they either give you certain buffs or debuffs in combat. For example, certain factions have damage advantages over other factions. As well, the more characters of the same faction you have in the team increases the bonus that you get from that. And not only does it give you increased damage, it also allows you to take decreased damage as well. So when you're pushing some of the harder end game content, having those factions for certain bosses is definitely going to be beneficial and needed. So you're gonna need a wide roster of characters. Speaking of characters, they are pretty easy to pull with very low pity counts and very high rates and drops on characters. The highest base rarity you can pull is the epics when you're pulling in the game. However, the elites that you can pull are definitely beneficial as well. And they're not like in other games where the lower rarity units are basically just absolute throwaways. Actually, the elite units are just as effective as well, especially when you consider that you can raise the rarity of characters the more duplicates that you get. For example, the first duplicate that you get on a character like Lucius here brought him from elite to elite plus. But I happen to have three additional duplicates here. And if I ascend him, it will take him from elite plus up to epic. And that is how you're going to increase the power base for a, any given character. So AFK Journey centers more so around the volume of pulls and getting more duplicates of a character for long-term progression versus other games that are a little more stingy with their pulls, but you only need to get a single copy of the character. It does make though for way more pulling and way more fun pulling. Like I've been playing for a couple hours now and I admittedly may have spent like a dollar on one of the starter packs so I could get an additional epic character and a couple extra pulls. And I've managed to get five epics so far just from the gotcha itself and a bunch of different elites that are also available here too. And I've already got Lucius up to epic as well from that. Pulling on characters can be found in this mythical house in the Noble Tavern. This is where you're going to see the various banners for the game. There's your classic raid up banner. Then there's the all hero recruitment, which is just a full pool of all of the different characters. But then there's also an epic recruitment that allows you to kind of select the headliner epic characters that has a chance of dropping. Let's see if we can have a little bit of luck. Let's just do one real quick. No. <laughs> no, we didn't get anything. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I was hoping. Oh, we accidentally pulled again. Oh, we got an epic though. Okay, who do we get? Who do we get? Okay, Satrana. I haven't used Satrana much yet, but I do have another single copy of her. Holy moly, her design though. In the game, you can farm this free currency, which are the diamonds, which can be used on the all hero and raid up recruitment. They can't be used on the epic recruitment, however, but you can still get these different epic invite letters. You can get them from clearing in-game events and activities. So, and they've been coming in at a fairly high rate so far in the early game, but you can use the gems on the all hero and the rate up banners. Now that's all the normal ways to get the characters. When you start a new account of the game, there are a ton of different events and activities that are going to be available that are gonna give you a ton of extra rewards that you can redeem and use to help progress your account in the early game. On launch of the event, AFK Journey is going to be giving away over 40 different characters that you can get and so you can completely fill your roster when you come in and play for the first time. A total from across so many different events and activities, you're gonna be able to get over 200 pulls when you start a new account when the game launches. And I can tell you, I've been dipping into it a little bit early here and it's been 
awesome. Now here's a little insider tip that I've thought about when coming into this game. Right now, a key part of progressing your account is going to be getting duplicate characters. At the launch of AFK Journey, it's the lowest number of characters that are going to be in the game's roster with, with new characters going to be added into the game in the future. With that being considered, now is probably the easiest time to get the duplicate characters that you need for progressing your account. So if you want to jump on this, definitely start on launch as soon as you can before the roster gets bigger and bigger because it's going to get harder and harder to progress that account. So we talked about how to actually progress the character, but we haven't talked about other layers of character progression here. And there are some really cool things that we need to take a look at. So the first is leveling. Of course, like any gotcha game, you're going to be leveling your characters. Something that AFK Journey does a little bit different is you don't actually level the characters, you level the slot. So as you can see here, Hands of Resonance. This five slots is where you're going to be leveling up your characters and will always hold the five highest level characters on your account count. Any other character who does not fall in those five slots is going to be resonated in the resonance hero section at the bottom here. Every other character is going to be resonated to the lowest character level of the five in this list. So for example, if I go into Cecia here and I level her up up to 51, the first thing that happened after hitting 51 is it did increase her skill level, but I can level her up a few more times. And then if I go back and look, all of the other characters are still only going to be level 50. So I could, if I wanted to, I could power level Cecia all the way up to level 59, which is capped because I'm out of resources, but I would still be capped as well at 60 because you can only ever be 10 levels above what the current resonance level is. So you can power level a character a little bit higher, but not high enough that it's going to have some like egregious, like, you know, in Pokemon, if you power level your starter way over everything else and you kill everything in one shot, you're not going to be able to do that. However, this does allow you that the more you've progressed through the game, you could choose which characters you wanted to level first before you're able to increase the whole resonance to try and push a little bit farther into the content. So that's the first part. The next part is the equipment. And equipment in gacha games is something that people usually either love or you hate it as far as it goes. But I'm going to say the way that AFK Journey handles their equipment, I am a huge fan of. The way AFK Journey handles their equipment is you don't equip each individual character, you equip the class. So if I go into the support section here, I can look at all of the equipment that I currently have available and it has been added onto the support class here. All of the bonuses that I get from these pieces of equipment, like the attack and the crit rate is going to be applied to every support class character that I currently have on my account. And you get this equipment just from like exploring and clearing other content in the game. There are drops that you're going to get that are going to allow you to progress. So instead of needing to equip 10 different support characters, you can have one set of equipment that then applies to all the support characters. I love how that's been simplified, especially when they've got some other quality of life stuff in here too. For example, right now, the highest level equipment that I have is level 40. However, I've unlocked the ability for max forging to go up to level 50, where I can spend gold and these forging stones to bring it up to level 50. But I can do that on any of my pieces of gear. So if you've had some really bad luck, really bad RNG on your account, and you've got on one of your factions, really low level pieces of gear, like for example, I still on my marksman have a level one chest piece here. I can go ahead and forge it and bring it up to level 50, which is going to give me a really big stat boost. You get these forging stones by recycling equipment and old gear pieces. Now in the early game, don't do what I did on that reforging there. You're going to be cycling through equipment really, really regularly, especially as you're clearing the early parts of the story. So don't reforge right away. I did it for the sake of this video, but if I wasn't doing it for that, I probably wouldn't have done it. So definitely a big fan of that. But the final piece that comes into kind of your character progression is the artifacts. Now the artifacts are like spells that you get to bring into combat. So your characters, your characters have equipment and their levels, and then your character, your mage that you've designed, you get to bring in a spell into combat that allows other kind of perks and bonuses to come into effect to help you clear certain types of stages. For example, the first one you're going to get is this artifact here, the Awakening spell, where it is after five seconds the battle starts, it summons Radiant Life to restore three weakest allies heroes, max HP by 7% every 10 seconds. So definitely more helpful on like some more like raid boss like levels. So something I haven't mentioned yet is how do you actually get the gold and material and experience to level up these five different slots. AFK Journey is an idle game, which means you get it 
through idling. There's this AFK progress screen that over time you're going to accumulate different equipment, gold, wonder dust powder, everything that you need for progressing your characters and you can collect it. The amount that you're going to collect is determined based on your AFK level, which can be increased by doing various battles. Now, I did encounter a small segment where there was a story progression thing needed before I could level up the AFK level anymore, but I haven't encountered it since then, and that was around level 10 or level 15. I'm currently chilling up at level 54. Sorry, make that 55 now. Now, if you forget to level up and you need to clear a bunch of these, there is the option as well to go ahead and click auto battle and auto battle will literally just keep going through combat till either you lose or you do hit another progression barrier of some kind. When I used auto battle, I literally went from level 15 all the way up to 53. There's also some extra goodies by clearing levels. For example, Hunter Gold, Chest, ooh, another five stages and I get another free pull, let's go. So one of the nice components of an idle game is that it doesn't require you to be on grinding super hard all the time to progress your account. You're going to collect the resources passively. Here's something you need to know when playing an idle game though, is you can't get time back unless you're willing to spend money to kind of do speed ups and stuff. So getting the highest level AFK farming you can get early game is going to have exponential effects down the line when you consider how much resources you're going to collect every hour. So early game progression tip here, you're gonna to wanna to push that as high as you can, as fast as you can for the compounding effects of resources. However, I will say idle games really do appeal to a casual audience and I really think AFK Journey is also appealing to a casual audience with this based on the equipment progression and how they're doing the leveling as well. Now story isn't the only mode available in AFK Journey. There is various other game modes as well. Like there is an arena, there is these dream realms, which is kind of like these big raid bosses that are available. There's also guild mechanics where there's these battle drills that allow you to progress for additional rewards here as well. There's a lot of different, what I would call horizontal progression available in the game. That's not simply just pushing through the story, but a lot of other game modes that you can dive into. Two game modes I haven't had a chance to try out yet are the Arcane Labyrinth and the Legend Trial. Now in the Legend Trial, it does say that hero formation choices are limited to develop more heroes for rewarding challenges. I'm assuming that's gonna be some kind of like faction-based combat where you know you can only use Graveborn heroes in some stages, like something along that line. So I'm interested to see what those game modes look like as I get deeper into the game. So as I said, I'm not, I'm not into the end game, so we can cover some more of my thoughts on the game as we reach that point, maybe in a future video. So overall, like I said, AFK Journey is a shockingly good game that was legitimately unexpected for me when I dove into this to try it out for the very first time. From the art style to the gameplay, it's something that I think is really good and it definitely caters more to a casual audience. However, if you want to get sweaty with it, I think this is something that you really could, you know, go in, optimize the systems, push the tower, get the resources, and it would be available for competitive players too, especially when you consider there are PvP modes also available. As I said, the game will be officially launching on March 27th. So if you would like to go ahead and join in on that, I will have some links in the description and the pinned comment for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. And thank you again, AFK Journey for sponsoring this video.